Hello, I am Attila Turso from Hungary. I'm an international chess master and chess coach. I would like to share a game with you about the minority attack. The minority attack is a special attack because instead of attacking with the majority of the pawns, the attacker attacks with his pawn minority against the opponent's pawn majority. His goal is to create a weak pawn and attack it and win it. In 2012, I played a special simul, the Thousand Bright Mind Simul, where I played online correspondence chess with 1,000 players in the same time from all over the world. The game which I will show was one of the game of the Thousand Bright Mind Simul. The white player was David Young, one of my students, who was able to win a nice game against me by using the minority attack, which we studied with him before the game. Let us look the game. I, st I played with black, he played with white. He started with d4. I played d5, he played c4. This is the queen's gambit opening. White offers a pawn on c4. With the idea if black captures it, then white can play e2, e4 to get a nice pawn center. I decided to decline the gambit and I played e6. He developed his knight to c3. I developed my knight to f6, and I defended the d5 pawn. He played bishop g5, pinning my knight. I unpinned the knight with bishop e7. He continued the development with knight f3. Then I castled. He moved e3. I played knight bd7. He played bishop d3, I played c6. I defended the d5 pawn one more time, and I also prepared the future pawn move b7, b5. My idea was to capture the c4 pawn with my d pawn, and when white captures back, then to play b7, b5 to attack his bishop and then develop my light square bishop to b7. After c6, he captured on d5. I captured back with the e-pawn and we got already the pawn structure, which is the theme of our lecture. White has three pawns on the queen side and black has four pounds, so white has the pound minority, black has the pound majority. This is the starting point of our team. Let us look how we develop the game. White castled, I developed the rook to e8 on the half open file. David played queen c2 and developed his queen and uh, attacked the eight seven pawn with the bishop and the queen. I moved my knight to f8 to defend the pawn and open the way for the light square bishop. But he played rook a b1. So this is the starting point of the minority attack. White prepares to advance the b pawn to b5 to create a weak pawn on c6. I moved to e a5 with my pawn. I wanted to prevent his b4 move. But he played a3 to support his b pawn. I moved g6. It is the start of a maneuver black 
where black would like to exchange the light square bishop on f5. White played b4. We exchanged the pawns on b4. Black played knight e6, which was the next step of the plan of the exchanging the light square bishops. Bishop h4, knight g7. So the knight from g7 and the pawn on g6 supports the bishop on f5. b5. So we achieved the position where white is ready to exchange the pawn on c6 and to create a weak pawn for black. Here black can choose to leave the pawn on c6 and continue his plan or also possible to capture on b5 but after rook takes b5 black would have two weak pawns two isolated pawns one on b7 and one on d5 which would be ideal targets for white. So instead of capturing on b5, I decided to continue my original plan with bishop f5 to exchange the light square bishops. It has black to get access to the c4 and e4 squares in the future, which are defended by the white bishop on d3. He captured on c6, I captured back and he played knight to e5, which was a good move. He attacked the backward c6 pawn. So the, so the first step of the white plan was achieved. He created a weak pawn on c6, and uh, this is the next step. He starts to attack it with knight e5, and the third step would be to win it. And then with the material advantage, possibly win the game. Here, black can dis defend the c6 pawn two different ways. Possible to defend with the rook on c8, how I played in the game. But possible that was not the best move. There was another way to defend with the queen from d6. So I think the better move was to capture first on d3 with the bishop, queen takes d3, and then queen d6 with the idea of uh, c6, c5, try to exchange the weak pawn. And also there is a special situation here. If white continue his advance with rook b8, then black would play knight f5. And after bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6. The e5 knight is under attack. And if uh, the white knight captures on f6, black can play queen to e6. And the white knight cannot escape, actually, only to e5. And after later knight e5, bishop takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes e5. Black wins back the pawn and gets around an equal game. So this way would be the better for black to play. But instead of bishop d3, I played rook c8 to defend the c6 pawn. Now comes an another theme for the attack, rook b7. So white now starts to use his ma ma major pieces, the rooks and the queen, to create pressure on the seventh rank and against the c6 pawn. He captured on d3, the queen captured back. Rook c7, this is a good move to neutralize the white rook. And here, white played the logical move rook fb1. But instead of that, possibly the better move was to exchange on c7, rook takes c7, queen takes c7, and play rook c1 to have a big pressure, a strong pressure on c6. And actually there, there's a nice threat of bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and knight takes d5, 
because the C6 pawn is pinned. But David, instead of capturing on C7, played the logical looking move, rook fb1, doubling the rooks and, uh, and uh, defending the b7 rook. He played knight f5, starting to activate my knight. Bishop g5, knight d7. It is a strong move. Black would like to exchange the strong centralized e5 knight and also the g5 bishop, which is a good attacker. Bishop takes e7. Here, black can capture back with the knight and with the rook. I choose the worst one, I captured with the knight. Let us look what happened if captured with the e7, captured on e7 with the rook. It would be a better move because it would defend the f7 pawn and also the other rook. It would have a good defend. It would be a good defending move. I would like to share you two possible variations from here, because there is a nice trick also in the position. If White would decide to go back with the knight to f3 to prevent the exchange, then, then because of the seven franc, the power on the seven franc, Black has a nice move. Please. Pause the video for a minute or two and try to find a strong move for black. Black can capture on b7, white captures back, and now there is a nice double attacking move, knight c5. The knight attacks the queen, and also, in the same time, the black rook attacks the white rook on b7, plus, also the knight attacks the rook on b7, so white cannot prevent the loss of the exchange. You need to capture on c5 and then black captures on b7. So this was one possibility, knight f3. If white decide to capture on d7, then after exchanging on b7 the rooks, Rook takes d7, rook takes d7, queen takes d7. And this position is very safe and it would be an equal game for black. The c6 pawn is still a little weakness, but white really cannot attack it and, white and black can defend it very well. So this would happen if black would capture on e7 with the rook, but I decided to capture with the knight. With the idea of actually defending the c6 pawn with the knight. And here white made a strong move, knight f3. So instead of uh, exchanging pieces and give space for black by that, he went back with the knight and then leaving the knight on d7. But here I continued with a good move, knight f8. N need to regroup the knights. It heads to e6, queen a6. So as we looked, white starts to use his major pieces on the queen side to attack the c6 pawn and attack on the 7 franc. Knight e6. And here, the best move for white would be queen a7 to increase the pressure on the 7 franc and also control the c5 square. But instead of this, he played uh, g3, opening the space for his king. But this was a little bit slow because I could make a good uh, freeing move here with uh, pawn c5. This was the best move, pawn c5. And uh, if uh, white captures, then I would be able to capture back with the knight or with the rook. If queen a7 continues to make the pressure, it would be not that dangerous because black can capture on d4 after rook takes c7, queen takes c7, exchanging the queens, and white captures on d4. But after knight e6, the position is very close to equal. White can 
move back the knight to e2 to be able to capture back with the knight. And black has an isolated pawn on d5, but it is very well defendable, so it will be a possibly a draw with the correct play. But instead of c5, I played here king g7. After king g7, white increased the pressure and played rook 1 to b6, attacking one more time the c6 pawn. I moved my queen to c8, attacking his b7 rook. He moved the queen to a7. And the pressure is the pressure is big. Black cannot defend the c six pawn in the long term. And also it's kind of no good uh, move for black. It's the pieces are tied up to defend the c6 pawn and defend the c the seven franc. I moved my king to f8 to defend the knight. And here he captured on c7, he captured back with the knight. And uh, here white had very strong move, knight e5, which would be a really powerful attacking move, attacking the c6 pawn and the f7 pawn. But also his move, rook b7, was strong enough to increase the pressure on the 7 franc. I played knight e6. And here he played a very good and nice idea. Opening up the position because he is very active and, and decided to get his c3 knight in the game. He played e3, e4. We died after the exchange, the knight captures back on e4 and would have a very nice access to d6 and f6 squares. I attacked the rook with the knight d8, but he had a very strong reply with rook d7 attacking the d5 pawn. Captured on e4, he captured back with the knight. And the situation is very, very sad for black and, and good for white. We have a equal in terms of material, but the positional advantage of white is so big, black cannot uh, prevent the loss of material. Example, now knight f6 is threatening to win the rook because it has no square to move. I played knight f5, opening up the e5 for the rook. He made knight g5, and this was already a double attack, which I cannot defend those pawns at the same time. I played rook e7 to stop his rook and queen. He exchanged on e7 and won the h7 pawn. King g7, I attacked his knight, he captured my knight, I captured his knight on h7. And now the great cooperation of the queen and the knight will lead to even increasing the Position advantage for white, knight f6 check, king g7, knight e8 check, king g8, knight d6. Strong double attack on the f7 pawn on, on the queen, queen b8, h4. And if we take a little look on this position, black cannot break out of his passive defense. The queen need to stay on the 8th rank to defend the knight and the knight should stay on d8 to defend the f7 pawn. White has an extra h pawn, and he started to push it to create a pass pawn, which helps in the attack against the black king. Black just need to sit and wait. I moved queen a8, queen f6. It's a strong move still, keeps the pressure on the f7 pawn and the d8 knight, but also this is this move eyes on g7. Queen b8, just need to defend. The, the knight cannot go out. g4. It prepares the h5 move. I decided to give a check, but this leaves this 
gives not much chances after king g8, king g2. There is no more checks and the uh, knight on d8 is hanging, so I needed to go back to b8. h5, change on h5. And there is no more defense against the advance of the h-pawn. I played a little desperate move, c6, c5, maybe with some chances and with a check on a8. But he decided to don't care about this move and h6, just the right, right thing to do. The check on a8 was not a help because after king h2 there is no more check. I moved the knight to e6 to control and defend on g7 to prevent the checkmate, at least in the short term. I captured on f7, king g, king h8, and he captured on e6 the knight. There is no more way to defend. I decided to capture on d4, and actually he was able to give me a checkmate in two moves. Please pause the video for a minute and try to find the checkmate in two moves. So the solution is queen f6 check forcing the black king to move to g8 or h7. There is no difference, the checkmate will be by queen g7. So this was the end, how my student David Young won a great game against me in the minority attack. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon on Sunday where we will study another interesting examples about the different themes in the minority attack. Thank you. Bye-bye.